I will let members and staff introduce themselves by speaking their names. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz Pritchett, member. Anna Smith, member. Steve Everett, member. Ben Cheney, member. And Meredith Crandall, staff. Meredith, would you like to review the remote meeting procedures? I will go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so. All right, so this is mostly for anybody who's watching via ORCA and might want to try and join in the discussion. Um, so first off, if you're watching via ORCA, you can participate in the meeting by using the Zoom platform and going to this link. Um, and that should bring you right into the meeting. You can also call this phone number and use the meeting ID and passcode. Um, if you have uh, problems using this information to access the meeting, you can email me. Here I've got my email up at the same time that I'm in this meeting. Um, so if anybody has problems accessing the meeting, please email me as I said. Also, if you're having difficulties while you're in the Zoom, video conference, um, you can message me through the chat function in Zoom. The Zoom meeting is being recorded, um, and but turning on your video is optional. Public testimony will be taken verbally, um, and the chat function should be used only for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, right now we don't have any public, and I don't believe, um, but just in case anybody does sign on at, once we're in progress. Um, if anybody else does come on, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking to reduce background noise. And if you do call in and participate by phone, you can use star six, six to mute within the Zoom feature so we know that you're muted. Um, I'm going to skip over some of this stuff because we don't have any public here right now. Um, if you do log in, sign in, or call in and want to participate, Please make sure that once the chair has recognized you to speak, that you state your name and address for the record. Oh, there's Eric. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, and I learned about that through my email, that there's people having difficulties, then the meeting will be continued to a time and place certain. If you're having connectivity issues, try turning off your video or closing other applications on your phone or computer. And then also please note that if you want to take a look at the meeting materials, you can go and download them here on this page. Uh, please note that all votes taken during this meeting that are uh, not unanimous will be done by roll call vote. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. You're up, Eric? Yes. Okay, great. Steve, there you go. Okay, good. Do I hear a motion from a committee member to approve the agenda? So moved, Eric. Do I hear a second? I second it, Martha. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Eric. Liz. Hannah. Ben. Steve, so the agenda is approved. And unless anybody else has anything to add, we can go to a review and approve the min meeting minutes of January the 4th. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or revisions to the agenda? I'm sorry, to the minutes, I'm sorry. No. Um, this is Martha, I move to admit them the way they are as they stand. Do we hear a second? I'll second that. Liz. All in favor of the minutes, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Liz. Liz. Hannah. Steve. Ben. So the minutes 
or approved for January the 4th. And unless there's any other business, we can go to 12 Main Street, an informal review of the proposed city park. Is there someone there to describe it for us? Everyone, I'm here. Um, I'm Cameron Niedermeyer, I'm the assistant city manager, and I'm really excited to preview this proposal with y'all today. Um, so the city would like to, and has been approved by council to move forward to apply for a grant through ACCD, which is a state um, uh, department um, for their Better Places grant. And what they're really looking for is something that can enliven and activate a space sort of in the downtown core. So one of the things that is required within this grant is that it improves your downtown core. Um, so when staff was looking at this opportunity, we immediately thought of 12 Main, which we are now calling 16 Main, just for clarity, sorry about that. What it is is a conglomerate of three different lots. And uh, so we were just calling it by the first lot number, but the main, the main lot that is going to be impacted is 16 Main Street. Um, Meredith, is it all right if I share my screen to show some pictures? Great. Cameron, before you do that, can you just clarify where that is? I'm having trouble. Yes, I will. I'm going to show you a picture of what it looks like right now so you'll see where I'm talking about. But it is right in front of the drawing board. So if you see this picture here, this is the lot I'm talking about right behind oh, the okay. This is Shaw's. This is the drawing board building. Here is the Saban OAB multi-use path, and back here is the river in a parking lot. So that's the space we're talking about. And so we got a pretty big plan for the space. It's only a $20,000 grant, but we have really intense dreams for the space. We really want to activate it by partnering with Montpelier Alive to bring some downtown um, activities to it, really thinking of like um, different types of uh, cold weather activities, like a outdoor fireplace type situation. None of those are quite um, figured out yet, but they will be uh, removable and temporary in nature, but mostly like a, a stage, things like that. The biggest issue we have is, uh, the biggest thing that we have is bringing over Girton Park. So I will show, oh, okay, that didn't work. I'm learning too, y'all. Zoom is the worst. So here are one of our proposed uh, site plans where Joyce has been working with us to come up with a proposed site plan. Um, it has already undergone changes, which is why this is um, hard to present to you in totality. But the main thing is we want to build, bring this Girton Park structure over and repurpose it in this park to really activate the space and and make it a welcoming environment when you come into town. Because y'all know this, that space is really on the main drag coming into town. And right now it really doesn't serve any sort of functional purpose. So we're really looking to activate the space as a extension of our parks downtown, create a relaxing, welcoming space to sit and maybe picnic and have a space where we can do small shows or other things in partnership with Montpelier Alive. Another part of this would be to have a public art um, bit where we'd ask for local artists to submit something to be put on this building as sort of a mural or other public art as possible. You know, we're gonna be taking suggestions, but our, our thought is a mural to sort of turn this building into something um, that sort of relates to the space. The most um, out there suggestion is building a pump track uh, which is very exciting to us because it doesn't involve moving around uh, the dirt because the site is a brown site. We know that, but we wouldn't be doing any sort of construction to the dirt itself. We wouldn't be moving things. We'd be creating on top of it and that would be it. So we wouldn't be disturbing any of the dirt. So we wouldn't be running into any of those environmental issues. We'd really just be putting things on top of. Um, you can in Ward's illustration here that he did put a playground structure that will not be included in our grant proposal. Playgrounds open up a whole host of um, things that we cannot even get to. The liability with a playground is it. We're just just pretend that's not there. Thank you. 
Um, so another exciting bit is this activates the space in the back of the parking lot as well, where you can see um, a little bench. Um, so um, Girton Park is, you know, named for Paige Girton's um, uh, husband who passed away. And so, you know, wanting to make sure that we keep the, the vibe of it being a memorial for Jed, that would be a uh, solid granite bench overlooking the water. So that's still up in the air too. Paige's family is currently looking at that, but she did approve moving Girton Park to this location. Um, we really do want to make sure that she's involved in all the planning. Um, so I've rambled on quite a bit. I want to just sort of hear y'all's proposed, like your questions and um, thoughts you may have going into this. Um, e grant is due this Friday. So we're really excited about how this timing worked out so that we could like listen to y'all and get any questions or feedback that you may have. So I'm going to stop sharing so I can see all your faces while I'm talking. One thing that struck me is that there are no trees or any plantings in it. And it's only in the plan. Right. So um, the plan, like I said, is not quite final. So the landscaping is going to be dependent on what does go there. Um, but there does, we do plan on there being some landscaping. Again, some of that is kind of limited because of the um, environmental impacts of the space. Um, so we're really just going to need to do our our due diligence there, figuring out what we can and cannot plant. So do you expect this to be sawed? Yes. Um, where is Girton Park now? So you know where the bike path goes past Shaw's and it keeps going towards the um, transit center? Right before you hit that bridge that goes across the river, there's a little out jutting where Girton Park structure is. So it's sort of off the path and kind of a um, hidden corner, if you will. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. What kind of uses did you have in mind for the little building? Um, so it's a really cute little um, artsy pavilion type thing that has an open side. So it, it does allow for some vaguely covered seating. It's not completely covered. Rain can come through it but it's a nice relaxing space for folks who are shopping, who want to take a seat, or we could also, because it's open in the front, use it as a impromptu um, stage as needed. Um, but I, it's, it's primarily a seating opportunity for folks. Montpelier Alive has also partnered with um, a local bench maker who uses recycled materials to create colorful benches. And that's who we intend if we get the grant to move forward with. I don't have their name in front of me. I apologize. I, I would suggest on the benches that uh, particularly the ones that are on Main Street not have a back so that they people can sit facing either direction. Thank you. Interesting. The uh, I happen to be that bench maker and they are the right. uh, modeled after the same benches that we created for Northfield and they do have a back Eric and they have an armrest. Um, so for what it's worth, uh, doesn't that it's a design that we have established and created and uh, we're going to reuse if you have been to downtown Northfield in this past fall, you would have seen them. They're bright red. I'll take a drive down to look. The reason I said that is so that people that want to sit and look out at what's going on on Main Street can do that, or uh, that they can look on what's going on on the park, because I envision both uses. Are you looking oh. at... Oh, go ahead, Ben. I was going to ask if um, you're looking at benches and picnic tables. Yes, I, they're both included in the design. Okay. I think we're going to be the most limited by price. Um, we'll see what we can get for the budget that we do have. While making sure we're still being fair to the artists that we want to hire to do work. So that will be most of our budget, I think. But yes, they're both in the site plan. Okay. I noticed that it looks like there's a food truck parked at the back of the park. Mm -hmm. And... 
I would suggest moving the the skate ramp to some other location so it's not crowding that area around the food truck. It's it's not. Thank you. If you've ever if you've ever been near a, a skate ramp when it's being actively used, it's fairly noisy and. It's not a good location right next to where the food truck is. I would move that somewhere else. You could so, even, depending on sorry, depending on if you're not going to put the playground equipment and the pump track, you could you might be able to move that into the center of the pump track, just to consolidate that area so it's not spread out over such a large area of the park. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. And definitely if we have to prioritize one uh, structure over the other due to financial limitations, we'll be going with the pump track over the skate ramp for sure. And I have found out that this was brand new news to me that they do make new coverings for like material coverings for skate ramps and the pump tracks and stuff that are like noise absorbing. So they're less loud, which I did not know. And a lot of uh, work has been done, a lot of advancements and skate park technology so you might be able to mute the sound of the wheels on the ramp but you can't not the kids the set you can't mute the sound of excited kids on the ramp. right that's fair <laughs> which is fine but if you can separate that from the area where your food truck is and it might be nice to have one of the picnic tables down near the food truck unless people want to take it and walk back towards the towards main street yeah. I, I feel I, like I heard I feel like I heard you say this briefly, but you intend to lay sod down over that whole surface. I think that's the idea because right now we want we want there to be grass as soon as possible, which would be a sod. Or we could get our department to come and help us price out how much that would be. I'm sorry, who asked that question? I couldn't see anybody. I did. Uh, Martha. Okay, I did. sorry. I was just wondering what all the green was. Yes, hopefully sod, grass at least. We'll, we'll figure it out together. <laughs> well, I'd like to echo. To well, talk about the landscaping, so hopefully, hopefully sod. I, I, we want this to be up and running by this spring, so... I'd like to echo what Eric said. I, I understand the, the environmental limitations, but I'd really like to see some trees there. The uh, the pump track the pump track designs are pretty designing is pretty sophisticated. And have you worked with any pump track designers? Yes. So um, Alec um, is our park director, and he's been working with us on this. Um, grant and he has partnered with um, groups before to make pump tracks for the city so he has been really great about that design. Is this going to be paved the pump track? That I can't tell you I don't think so because what the the underlying thing about this lot is that this is sort of a placeholder for council can decide to do whatever council wants to do with this lot right in a couple of years, they might decide they want to sell it to a business or use it for some other function. And so we need to be as responsive to that as possible. So we want this to be an open and engaging space for as many folks as possible, but also understanding that council could decide two years from now that they don't want to do it anymore, right? So anything more permanent like that is probably not the answer. I think a lot of this is going to either be dirt piles that we could very easily knock over or, um, you know, like the, the pump track down by, uh, oh, what's that road called? Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? The new pump track. Cummings Road, yeah. Yes, thank you. So, um, <coughs> so we're, we're not going to looking for things like that. Everything can be bolted down because, you know, we've got to be responsive to the floodplain issue there, um, but it won't be permanent as a paved anything and, and is parks going to take care of it yes because parks has a plan to manage it yes pump tracks require some maintenance mm -hmm. yes sir i was speaking with dan groberg about this oh, briefly a little bit and he had mentioned the idea of 
moving in a bunch of big boulders. Um, I don't know if that idea is thrown out, but it's I, I like that as a as a climbing structure. You see it on Church Street where kids love to climb on them, and it's like a fairly you know easy to quote unquote build um, and just artful and interesting kind of way of allowing people to climb and sit and be. But maybe you thought of that and uh, moved it out. Yeah, a few boulders are included in this site plan. I think maybe in the one I showed you, they were a little hidden. Let me pull another one back up and we can stare at it together. Hold on. I like that idea, Ben. Uh, do you know the story behind the boulders on Church Street? Is we have some boulders here. It's uh, Mother Earth reemerging after the weight of the traffic is taken off the street. Oh. Church Street's pretty remarkable. I spent a while understanding all the um, sort of longitude, latitude uh, cities on Church Street one night. It's a pretty serious piece of art, actually. One of those, uh, it's one of the few of those malls that's really been successful in the country. Yeah. Uh, Can we see that site plan again, please? Oh, yep. This the this drive is this the way people are going to access the back lot, the Jacobs lot back there in Avishon. Yes. And so that the driveway has no bearing on this um, application or this plan. The driveway is established by um, other projects that DPW is finishing up now. It and is, it is it is two lane, I assume. Yeah, it's an in and out. Uh, and it, it, but the, the part down by the river is part of the project. Yes. All of these lots or are, are the cities, um, but the the pave uh, the pavement work has already been established by another DPW project. Yeah, I would think more benches down close to the river would be nice. That's probably a cost factor. Yeah, it only is a twenty thousand dollar grant, so we're working the best we can. It always there, be expanded. Um, so, is the placement of Girton Park intentional for some function like that, or is that uh, no? So, so like I said, the moment? I I apologize for talking over you. I'm sorry. Um, Zoom is very difficult. I can't see here. Anyway, so we actually asked Ward in his final drawing to move the park so that um, the back of the structure faces the sidewalk. So if y'all are familiar with this structure, it doesn't have a solid back. It has like slats so you can still see through it. So we asked him to turn that towards the sidewalk and then um, open up Girton, like the Girton Park structure to the greater park. So <coughs> just as that um, performance space, uh, ad hoc performance space, and so that when you're in the park structure itself, like when you're there in Girton Park structure, you can see the rest of the 16 main lot. So this is sort of where we envisioned it being, but rotated facing the park. Yeah, I like that. I think it makes more sense. It's lost the way it is now. And again, I'm sorry I don't have an updated site plan to show you guys right now. Are we going to get a look at this again when more of the designs are finalized? I believe so. Um, Meredith, I'm, I'm, can you walk me through what approval steps we'd need? Uh, which approval steps you need really depends on what your final design is going to be. Okay. You know, I mean, you're, you're moving the Girton Park, Park structure. Um, it, it, that's, 
you know, even though it's okay to put it one place, we're moving it. I just, it would all depend on what exactly you're doing there. You know, cause the, the like the pump truck out on Cummings needed a permit. Um, but that had to do with its specific location. I would need to look at distances from the river, all of that stuff. Um, Perfect. I think, you know, once you've gotten your grant um, approval and have a closer to final design, bring it back and Audra and I can figure out where, what the actual approval process would require. I think that we probably want to bring it back to design review um, for our landscaping at the very least, once you have those ideas, because landscaping is something that design review has authority over, whether it's a municipal project or not. All right, well, you heard it from Meredith. <laughs> oh, and you and I can talk about that too, once you have some ideas before it even gets through to the DRC process um, about what actually, you know, makes sense with the regs and any ideas you and I might be able to throw back and forth to fine tune stuff too. Great, thank you. It looks good to me. Thank you. We're very excited about the opportunity. I really hope that we um, we are afforded this grant. Yeah, it looks like you're trying to do trying to do a lot with not a whole lot of money. So I applaud your effort there. It's definitely going to be a, a stretch to pull a lot of those things off. So. Um, hard to be too picky about it at the moment <laughs> with what what you're trying to accomplish with the money you. you have one advantage of many of the components of the park is that they are movable so that as you set it up and it starts being used you can tweak with the exception of the pump track most everything else can be tweaked and moved around to maximize your function that's a really good observation. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to sign off because I have another park commission meeting. I want to go to at six o'clock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything to add as far as comments, suggestions, or questions regarding the park? Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. I'm gonna, I've got another team meeting this week before we turn it in and we'll be um, discussing all of your suggestions and I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming and good luck with the, uh, the project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cameron. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Did you have anything else, Meredith, to add? Nope. Then our next meeting is February the 1st. And do I hear a motion to adjourn? I motion to adjourn. Okay, I'll second it, Liz. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Liz. Anna. Ben. Steve. So meeting is adjourned. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.